If you are thinking to do your first solo trip, but you are worried at the idea, you came to the right place. Because I've been there, and now that I became a full-time solo traveler, I'm here to give you my best advices on how to start. Hello everyone, if you don't know me yet, I am Mary Jane. I make videos about solo trip traveling every week. So please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button to get more material about it. And if you are on Instagram, follow my profile so you can keep track of all my trips. So if you're not experienced in solo traveling yet, you're much likely pretty scared about the idea of it. Don't worry, it's totally normal. Traveling is already something that puts us in an uncomfortable situation, outside of our homes, outside of our routines, Traveling alone is kind of scary, even if you get used to it. And it's always harder to push yourself if it's the first time you do it. I'm here today to give you a track to follow to start doing it in seven steps. Before jumping into them though, we have a pre-step. So number zero for traveling alone is don't do it if you have never traveled before. If you're still unexperienced about traveling at all, Start with someone who has done it before. It could be a friend or a relative, but it could also be a company that provides group tours. If you have already traveled at least a couple of times and you feel ready to jump in the wonderful world of solo traveling, keep your ears open. Number one, choose an adequate destination. Avoid cultures that are very different than yours if you don't know them yet. Avoid complicated trips with many layovers and difficult arrangements and avoid dangerous countries in general. Number two, plan and book in advance. I'm all about spontaneous trips. You may have seen me in some of my vlogs, for example, this one, but I really live by the moment when I travel and sometimes I even find an accommodation for the night only in the afternoon. But my trips weren't like this when I first started. Make sure to plan at least the transportation from the airport to the city, the accommodation for the first night and some activities, at least for the first night. It will make you feel less lost and confused when you first arrive. Extra tip, avoid arriving in places you don't know after sunset. Just believe me. Number three, if you don't book it or plan it, at least do some research. I always start with the Wikipedia page of the place and with Google Maps. It's as easy as that. In the case of the transportation from the airport to the city, for example, if you don't book it, at least look up the options and the prices so that when you arrive, you are not completely lost. And then do some research about the sightseeing and the activities and especially on the culture and the habits of the locals. Memorize the exchange rate and the most common words in the local language. Number four, pack light and always know where your things are. Traveling alone means that you are the only one who is carrying the luggage and the only one who is responsible for it. First, you don't want it to be so heavy that you need some stranger's help in order to move it. Second, you don't want to have more than two bags to remember to take around. Third, you don't want to have so much stuff inside that you can't find your valuable objects in less than 10 seconds. I made a video on how to pack a perfect hand luggage for solo travelers. Go check it out here. Plus, I also made a PDF that guides you step by step in the packing process. But I'll tell more about it at the end of this video. You need to know where your stuff is all the times, especially the valuables. If you're around, you need every few minutes to make a quick check of all your stuff. Do I have my two bags? Do I have my phone? Do I have my passport? Where is my camera? Number five, choose an accommodation that allows you to make friends right away. Unless you're traveling in the woods, even if you are a solo traveler, you're constantly surrounded by people and you need to become friends with some of them. Otherwise, you'll start to feel lonely. The easiest way to do that is starting from the accommodation. And there are good news for this one. This kind of accommodation is at the same time the cheapest you can find. Hostels are perfect for first time solo travelers and they are packed with solo travelers who can't wait to be friends with you. If you decide to go for hostels, I do recommend you to use the website hostelworld.com and especially their mobile app because it's fantastic, especially if you are on the go in a city and you want to get the best deal. But 
if you want to go really deeper in exploring the local culture, then you should go with couch surfing. If you don't know very well how couch surfing works, go watch this video I made where I quickly explain it. You will also find it linked in the description below. This is also the perfect option for shy people because you are forced to bond with someone since you are going to be this person's guest. Plus, this happens to be a local who will directly show you how the locals live in that region. Huge bonus! Number six, don't trust anyone 100%. Of course, you're not going to trust some random stranger who makes you an offer in the middle of the street. Who you need to pay attention the most are the people you just started feel comfortable with because you are most likely to trust them and you shouldn't. And I'm not being malicious here, it's just that they could be distracted, clumsy or not be as capable as they think they are or they claim they are. And if you have known them for only a few days, you may have not realized that yet. Number seven, avoid dangerous situation and have a backup plan if you put yourself in a risky one. Again, the problem is not when you clearly feel the danger, the problem is when you feel it's risky but you don't know if it's actually dangerous. In this case, you have to set up a backup plan in your mind before you go for it. Let's say you have to go from point A to point B. And to do so, you either going to take a long detour or you just go straight from point A to point B, but the street doesn't look so reassuring. You are the only one who needs to evaluate the risk and make a decision. If you decide to take the risk though, you need to think about what you would do if something went wrong. In this case, for example, you could make sure to hold your bags very tightly and close to your body and maybe hold the safety device in your hand like a pepper spray or a silent alarm while you pass that street. Last recommendation is start slowly and go at your own pace. Even one day spent on the other side of the city or the region you live in or a weekend in the next door's town could be a fun and interesting trip. Start from there and then you work your way up to bigger travels. This was my track to follow if you have just booked your first solo trip or if you plan to do it. If you think it was useful, hit the thumbs up to like the video. But especially if you found these tips good, you may want to check out the small guide I put together to bring on your first solo trip. It's a PDF that contains the seven important steps for you to start traveling alone. you find the link to the download in the description below the video. Earlier, I also mentioned the packing planner. It is a very quick guide to follow in order to pack everything you need in any kind of trip in only one hand luggage. And it also includes a complete packing list. You can also download Download it immediately, I leave the link in the description. Before we say each other goodbye, I'd like to know what are your fears when it comes to traveling alone? Please leave a comment below and let me know what is your biggest fear regarding solo traveling. If it's a matter of safety, fear of loneliness, of losing your stuff, let me know. I wish you many many wonderful trips. Bye!